Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we've got a series of missions that are approaching Mars and we need to get them into orbit. This mission, Ares Pod G2 on the Fiji 3 R1, is uh, now approaching in Mars SOI and we are assessing what altitude we would like to have it get into the atmosphere so that uh, we can air break and make a safe orbit. Uh, Mars Base 1 could land directly. I don't really want this Ares pod to land directly. I would like it to get into orbit and then we'll decide what to do with it after that. And it's looking like 38 kilometers is what I'm going to try with this. So let me give you some numbers. Uh, in the previous episode we had Mars Port 1 successfully captured and it captured at 36 kilometers. That was the periapsis I aimed for to capture and it entered the SOI at 5,944 meters per second. That's 200 meters per second faster than this was at the start of the SOI. And it was also twice as heavy as this one on its heat shield. So it had the same size heat shield I think. At least they both say 5 meters. Uh, but um, it was uh, 1.697 tons per meter squared. This is 0.8 tons per meter squared. Uh, by comparison, uh, the last time we sent missions, these particular missions, over to Mars, Mars Port 1 uh, had captured at 40 kilometers periapsis, and so that was, uh, the previous time was 40 kilometers, and this time was 36 kilometers, and at 36 kilometers, this one still ended up in a higher orbit. Uh, Ares Pod G previously captured at 42 kilometers, so if you go by the same logic, it should be 4 kilometers down, therefore 38 kilometers. That said, I think this heat shield is bigger, so trying to capture at uh, 38 kilometers might put us into a lower orbit, which may be alright, because um, taking a look at the orbit that the Ares Pod G from the last sortie captured at, it was pretty high up. I mean, it wasn't that high up. It was a 4-hour orbit. But we could do with a two-hour orbit with this. If we land directly, it'll probably tell us something about the parachutes and everything. And we have another mission identical, basically, that uh, we can use for further testing. So, yeah, 38 it will be. So, we are basically pointed radial. So, let's say RCS on. And, okay, that will do. But... I think, yep, it'll take a day and three hours to get to periapsis. So what we want is a maneuver there, add that alarm, and now we can take care of Mars Base 1 entering the SOI, because we have to make sure that's all situated as well. And that's completely different. It's got a different heat shield loading, and it'll probably be coming in even slower than this. So different numbers. Okay, Mars Base 1 has just entered the SOI, and I'm jotting down the velocity, 5695 meters per second. Mass is 19.52, and it says it's a 4 meter heat shield, and it does look sort of smaller compared to that. It depends on the width of the crew cabin compared to the Gemini pod, though. And here we have... 19.52 uh, divided by its area, 1.55 tons per meter second, per, per meter squared, sorry. 1.55 tons per meter squared. So, um, not too far off from Mars Port 1 as far as the loading is concerned. Last time we brought it in, we brought it in at 42 kilometers. So, I'm probably going to try 38 here as well. It has the same loading as, I mean, it has double the loading of Ares Pod G2, though. It is going a little bit slower. I'm not sure exactly. We'll have to see. But for now, let's have it point radial. Okay, well, that's close enough to 38 for me. Let's have a dummy maneuver close to when it's getting in. That'll be fine. All right, so we will be reminded of this. And back to the Aries Pod G2, and let's see what happens with it at 38 kilometers. 
All right, approaching Mars. And again, we're not anticipating that this mission has gotten to rendezvous with the station or anything. Though, you know, in a pinch, we could try that, but not the intention. Electric charge is holding fine, but it seems to consume more when we have a Kerbal on board. Gonna retract this antenna here. Not sure if they rip off, but probably. And let's get the solar panels in now. Here we go. We are properly positioned. We are in the atmosphere now. Uh, 7,373 at the interface. And that's about 130 meters per second slower than the Marsport 1 mission. Okay, here we go. Serious deceleration now. Okay, velocity at the bottom, 5,660 or so. That's about 170 meters per second slower than the Marsport 1 mission we just brought in. So we are expecting a lower orbit with this, but hopefully not too low. We have captured. Okay, and on exit we are at 4,103 meters per second. Um... We've got charred ablator of six units. And our resulting orbit was 7,717 kilometers by 32.5. And that's a five hour and 12 minute orbit. Not too sure. I guess the thrusters are firing. That's why our orbital period was still being changed. Let's make sure we get into a proper orbit now. All right, and uh, we're gonna use these thrusters. That's why I'm pointed retrograde. Okay, we'll keep it fairly close to the atmosphere, 131 kilometers, and we've got 4,229 meters per second left, it thinks. I assume that's after we release the heat shield and that's why the stage delta V is zero. So here we are. We are in orbit, electric charge is fine, and that's all good. We could probably pass through the atmosphere again with the heat shield, the uh, blazer hasn't ablated very much. And yep, uh, back to Mars Base 1, and we'll try bringing that into orbit. And after that, we've still got two missions. Okay, so here we are with Mars Base 1. We will try to make orbit first, just to enhance the precision of our eventual landing. With an inclination of 32 degrees, we do have choices as far as where to land, but not an infinite number of choices, not anywhere on the surface. Okay, well, we have to knock this part off, unfortunately. And... Once again, we didn't get much use out of it, but you never know. Better to have it than not. And I don't think our launch was particularly overburdened. I've already topped off the fuel up here, so... Okay, off it goes. Let me try that again. Ah, uh, while well that throws off my calculations, the mass is actually only 15 tons, not 19 tons, because I was adding in that module we just kicked off. So, that's a bit different, yeah. Certainly changes the heat shield loading. Okay, approaching periapsis. We're substantially lower this time. This may be direct to landing at this rate. 4,950, yeah, I'd say that I should probably arm the parachutes at this point. Let me get surface info up. I mean, maybe we'll end up back out, but it's a close call. Nah, it sure looks like we're coming straight down. 
wherever we happen to be now. Unfortunately, we're right on the Terminator, so might be in the dark. Well, we should probably arm the engines first. Oh, I didn't want the heat shield. Oh, fine. And the engines. <laughs> Forgot about that. Heat shield coming back at us. Hopefully it won't cause problems. Okay, we should have parachute deployment soon. Drogue shoots. Appear to hold. And the drogue shoots are doing a lot of work here. We're only at 70 meters per second. Surprised the heat shield is still sticking on us. Main shoots. And full drogue shoot deployment as well. We'll have full main shoot deployment at 2 kilometers. That didn't do a whole lot, did it? Oh, it's starting to do something. Let's just get this on. Landing gear down. Oh, the heat shield broke the landing gear. Um, this heat shield, a uh, lot of drag. Lots and lots of drag. Not too sure what to do about that. Apparently we've got two of these. There we go. Uh, Let's just keep that going. Uh, there's a lot of rocking. There's a lot of rocking. That's not good. Oh man. Okay, looking good ish. Impact recorded. <laughs> I didn't realize we had an accelerometer to record an impact, but okay. Okay, I better not follow the retrograde vector too much. Okay. We are on the surface. It is a base. It's in the dark though, so... That's not great, but once it gets to be daylight around here, it'll be able to replenish its batteries. Really should have put more batteries so it could survive the nighttime side properly. But um, at some point, we'll just use a connector port like this to plug it into a more powerful generator like a nuclear generator. If we can land stuff close to it. But a base has been landed on Mars. So yay. And um, we did it semi-properly this time except for two landing struts broke because of the heat shield that really, really likes to stick to us. It's really impressive. Okay, let's turn those off. And there it is, Mars Base 1. Alright. Okay, well it looks like I was mistaken about the situation with this mission. It's doing a 32 meter per second correction. And uh, that is going to help us get much closer to Mars. Because right now we're approaching at 315,000 kilometers, which is pretty far away. And so, but that arrival is going to occur in 180 five days so that's after all of the other business we need to attend to and probably at a very different altitude than everything else we've done of course this is the combined mission if you recall and uh, it's got its own peculiar sort of situation going so I'll time warp to this node and take care of this 32 meter per second burn hopefully using the fuel in here Hopefully that'll be enough. And, uh, yeah. I mean, overall, we're lacking in fuel all over the place here. Well, that at least is topped off. So the situation could be worse. Okay, we are in the process of handling this correction. And... Let's see what's happening at Mars. Crash course. That's not a crash course. Okay. So that's pretty good. And let us make a. Well, we'll we can just have the SOI change. 184 days. So it'll be a while. This uh, crazy situation has got a ways to go. 
And that leaves us with the Aero NTO Depot approaching a node in nine days. I don't know if that is a dummy node or an actual maneuver. Well, it is an actual maneuver, but it is a maneuver within Mars SOI. So we are going to bring this into orbit. It's going to use its own power. Uh, it says Ares Pod A's water is running out. Um, that's probably just because of its large space for water. Let's just check. Uh, yeah, 93 days. It's going to be arriving in 23 days. So it's just because it can contain 930 days of water that it's giving us this warning because it's down to 10%. And presumably it'll soon give us the oxygen warning as well. So yeah, okay, well that's expected. Though annoying. There's the oxygen. Well, we need to pull our periapsis further away from Mars than that. Interesting correction that corrected our inclination, but didn't take that into consideration. We, in fact, need to be outside of the atmosphere because we are going to be capturing with our engine. So that'll do. There's Mars, let us approach. It's gonna take some time to do this burn. How long until periapsis? 13 minutes. Well, that should be about right. So, retrograde. Our approach speed here doesn't seem anywhere close to the previous missions, which were going in a lot faster. So that's good. Oh, settling fuel down. Now burn. Need to pitch up just a tad so that we avoid the periapsis going too low. Want to keep it outside of the atmosphere, even though skimming the top of the atmosphere probably won't do any damage. I just want to keep it clear. Okay, that's a capture. And let's hold it right there. Our periapsis was low again. Okay, that's technically outside of the atmosphere. And I'm going to leave it at that because we don't exactly know what we want to do with this. Maybe we want to bring it all the way down to the station down here. Or maybe we'll have it support some of the other missions. Not sure yet. It's got 2,686 meters per second right now, but not really that much fuel to contribute to the station. So we'll only bring it down if that becomes necessary. But if it turns out that it can snag some other mission that ended up capturing too high, for instance, or something like that, then it can do that instead. So I'll just leave it over here. It's also not quite at the right inclination, so it would need an inclination adjustment just to get to the station as well. But if something else comes in at an odd inclination, it could help out with that too. So here it is. But the next thing we have to do is Aries Pod A, which is arriving at Earth. And rather than do that in this episode, I'm going to do that in the next episode because it seems like a good cliffhanger. So, on that note, and with these missions all set, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.